to uh, we ask God that you keep us in your keep as we keep you in our prayers. We ask God that you continue, God, to cover us as we begin our journey as interactors. And we pray, God, that you will um give us your guidance, your protection over us. And we ask God that for your guidance and your protection to love this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rotary and Cheryl. Now I started, I'm sorry, I started the recording during the prayer. And so since I, of course, omitted to ask your permission, I, I know it will be granted that we record this meeting. And I just want to recap and just say welcome. Welcome to our Interact Board training with a theme, Youth Leadership in Action. Thank you, all our interactors. I see Shad Neal from Government High School, Ray Richardson from Kingsway Academy, Jashia Browers from Leadership Academy, and I'm seeing all my Rotarian sisters and brothers in the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for that prayer, Shereel. We're going to move now into our icebreaker, and so I'll ask uh, Director Patrick to get the show going. Director Patrick. Okay, I see him relaxing and not probably not hearing me. Let me just welcome. Yeah, he's on the phone, that's why. Okay, so let me just quickly welcome everyone again. I see President Therese online. President Therese, open your mic and just say hey. So our interactors can meet you. Good welcome. Morning. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Good morning. I hope you have a good session this today. Morning. Welcome. We also have our AG Carla, who is a presenter, but in her official capacity as AG for Rotary Club of the Bahamas. We welcome you, AG Carla. Open your mic and say hello. Hello. Good morning. Happy to be here. Okay, great. Thank you. We have PAG Karen past. Assistant Governor Karen, you could say hi, good morning. We get to test out our microphones before we start. AG Karen, PAG. Sorry, hi everybody, good morning, good morning from deep in the east. It's a pleasure to be here on this beautiful, gorgeous Saturday and see all of you. Thank you. Yes, so welcome. So welcome to Neil, Tanisha, um, Shadney, and uh, all our interactors from Kingsway Academy, from Government High School, from the Leadership Academy. We are so happy to have you here. And so I hope um, Director Patrick is now ready for us. Director Patrick? Okay, he's still on the phone. All right, I'll pass over him for a little and I'll go to our Director of Youth Services, Angelica, just to say a quick word before you go into the bio, let's give Patrick some time. If he doesn't, then I'll go quickly into the icebreaker. Good Director morning, Angela. everyone. Good morning, morning. Happy to see everyone on. Just wanted to welcome everyone to an exciting and engaging youth services interact board training. And I hope you all enjoy. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I see we have DRE Robin, welcome. And uh, she's our keynote speaker for today. So you don't wanna go anywhere, grab your orange juice, your apple juice, your tea, and come right on back because you're not going to want to move from before from in front of your device you're going to be stuck here with us for two hours as we take you through a wonderful morning we have some great presenters and they are waiting to share with you so i think i see um director patrick is now off the phone so we're now going to call on him director patrick we were waiting on this icebreaker so you have to make it up to us now all right so over to you director patrick Good morning, I apologize. Okay, good morning all. Good morning. No one good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
morning, Patrick. Morning. Morning. Okay. Sound like no one wake up yet. So let's hear what we want to do. I think they were good to do. All right. So, so, so but that, that's that, all, all I heard were responding with directors and presidents. I didn't hear no inter, no, no interactors. Seems as if they're still sleeping. So, what do we want to do with all the interactors, right? I know most of y'all probably still in bed. So, I want you all to get up and go find me a reel of red thread. The first one back wins a prize. I want to see a reel of red thread. I know I'm, not not an I'm not an interactor, but <laughs> oh my gosh, that was just right here. I don't know. I must have known. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have shared it with Shadney or one of my interactors, but. All right, why is they doing that? I'll tell a joke. All right, there was these three priests. There was a Baptist pre pre a pastor, an Anglican priest, and a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And they were sitting down discussing one day what they do when they collect the collection, how they share it with the Lord. So the Baptist priest goes first, he said, what I do is I flip a coin, heads for me, tails for the Lord. The Methodist goes said, what I do is half for me, half for the Lord. Father P isn't there, right? Then the Anglican priest come, oh, I have the best system of them all. What I do is I throw it in the air to the Lord, what he wants to keep, what he don't want, he let drop for me. Yeah, that ain't weak. We're muted and that's why that was funny. We're muted so we can't get to laugh. So, but guys, you can laugh. You can use the emoji. So at the bottom of your screen, you'll see an icon that says more or depending on what kind of device you're using. But use those emo emojis and of course, enter your laughter in the chat. That was funny. No one else found our red thread. This morning. Yes, yeah, summer. Summer got his red. Okay, summer. Sorry. Summer got red thread. You have to turn on your camera and show it to us. Um, summer. I clean my whole room up. Thank God. If we can't oh, yeah. see it, uh, yeah, are you seeing it? it? Yes, I'm seeing it. Okay. Okay, you're the winner. Oh, Janae has a red thread as well. Okay. Don't no, my, my, inter my interactors have to get prizes in a director of Patrick, so I don't know what you're giving to them, but <laughs> I know they want something from going and getting their red thread. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Okay. All right. Donald, Donald, be responsible for getting your prizes to you all. All right. Okay, okay. so. All right, Donald, back to you. That was it. Okay, thank you so much, Director Patrick. So if you just joined us uh, and before we did the welcome, please enter in the chat your name and your Interact Club so that we know who you are. And of course, congratulations, Summer and Shadney. So without further ado, I'm going to invite our um, Director of Youth Services, Rotarian Angelica, to introduce our first speaker, and she will tell you who that is. So over to you, Angelica. Good morning again, everyone. Our first speaker for this morning, Assistant Governor Carla Carr Stubbs is an attorney at law. She is originally from Jamaica, but has lived and worked in several islands in the Caribbean. She now lives in Nassau, New Providence, Bahamas, which is home. In the Bahamas, she teaches law to student attorneys at the Eugene DePuge School. The Eugene DePuge Law School is one of three regional schools run by the Council of Legal Education, which prepares students for admission to the practice of law in the Commonwealth Caribbean. A.G. Carla is also a trained mediator and arbitrator. In 2016, she obtained her real estate license and is a licensed real estate sales agent. In her spare time, A.G. Carla enjoys traveling, reading, 
public speaking, hiking, and community service. A.G. Carla started her Rotary journey as a member of the Rotary Club of Road Town in the British Virgin Islands in January 2000. When she moved to Nassau in January 2003, she immediately sought out a Rotary home. She joined the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise, serving on the board in various capacities and as club president in 2009 to 2010. A.G. Carla also served at the area levels and district levels in various capacities. She is a certified Rotary Leadership Institute discussion leader and a District 7020 PETS trainer. On July 1st, 2020, she assumed the role of Assistant Governor for the Bahamas West, Rotary Bahamas. She is married to Mr. Felix Stubbs of the Bahamas, retired business executive, who is also a, also a Rotarian and is a past district governor for District 7020. They are both members of the St. Paul of the Paul Harris Society Level 2 major donors and Level 4 Bequest Society members. Let's please welcome A.G. Carla. Thank you, Rotarian Angelica. Good morning. Good morning, family. I should say family because I am... Um, Told, I am to introduce you to the family of Rotary. So welcome family, I hope you're awake this morning. And let's see if we can do a quick introduction about this beautiful family that you are a member of. I'm gonna share my screen. And now I want it to be interactive. So you need to talk to me. So that either means in the chat or off your mic. So before I start, can somebody give me a definition of family? What's a family? Anybody? And I see people in the chat, and I, and I don't mean the Rotarians. The Rotarians not winning anything today. I'm talking about the interactors from Kingsway, from leadership, from government high. That's who I'm talking about. Give me a definition of family. Anybody, Who is, what's a family? When we say family, what do we mean? What do you think of? Or just put the, the, a person in the family. I don't see one. Summer, go ahead. You raised your hand. Yes, mom. Um, when I think of family, I think about the people that you are close with, people that you love, people that you hang out with often. I like that. And because I like that, I'm going to take that answer and run with it. So a Starbucks coffee certificate for you. I will get that to P.E. Donneth. P.E. Donneth, please take these things down. I have the Starbucks coffee ready to go. Awesome. So some point, family here, we're not just talking about our mom and dad and our grandmother and our aunts and brothers and sisters, which is the literal meaning of family, but we're talking about those that we, we share with, those that we think about, those that encourage us, those that we have a connection and a bond with. That's family. And so, for family, there are some things that connect us, right? Our name, our history, our rules, the things that guide us. So that's when we speak about the Rotary family, I want us to think about it in that context. Where Rotary, can you see my cursor? Yeah? The road, when we think about Rotary, we're gonna see who are the elements and who are, who are the members of this family. So I thought I would just give you very quickly the hierarchy of, of Rotary so you understand where we fit in. And then I'm going to break this down. But I think sometimes it's good to see the big picture first, right? Rotary International is at the top. Sorry, I'm trying to do my camera. Rotary International is at the top. So when we say a Rotary, and you know, your members of Rotary, what we're talking about, Rotary is an international family. So at the very top, there's something called Rotary International, which is the body that governs all of us, we can say. And because it's a body, it has to be run like a body, like a company. So it has a president and a board of directors. And every year that president changes. And I'm going to tell you that the rules that apply at the top apply to everybody that goes down. So every year the president changes, the board changes, every year the directors 
and the presidents of our clubs, Rotary Clubs, and in your clubs, Interact Clubs will change. So Rotary International is at the top. And then the directors on the board, they have certain areas that they have to look at. We call them zones. We happen to be in zone four. And then the zones are split further into districts. And the purpose of this is so that we can manage. We can manage what Rotary does. Because imagine if we're all over the world, then who manages? Who knows what we're doing? How do we connect with each other? How do we help each other to fundraise? If we're going to visit uh, different countries, how do we recognize each other? How do we just go to a club, which is great because once I'm a Rotarian, I can go to any Rotary club in the world. Once you're an interactor, you can go to any interact club in the world. So these are the management tools. So now we come to us. So we have Rotary International, we have the directors on the board, they have areas called zones, and then the zones are broken up into district, and we're in a district called 7020, and that just means an, an easier area to govern. And for us, that's the, we call it the Northern Caribbean. We have 10 countries, 16 islands, and expanding in the Caribbean. And so the Bahamas is part of District 7020. I want you to remember that because there might be a Starbucks coffee certificate in somebody's future. And then out of District 7020, we have the Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas. So the Bahamas, remember, is part of this district. And I'm taking out the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise. You see here Rotaract Clubs. Rotaract Clubs also falls in the district, District 7020. It used to be that Rotary Clubs had to sponsor Rotaract Clubs. They now don't need a sponsor. They're young professionals. So they're the persons, so they're the young adults. They're the persons in the Rotary family that are at the college level, at tertiary level, or they're just entered their profession. So they just left university and they're new in their profession, whatever that is. And so they're in the community. So we have college Rotaract clubs and we have community Rotaract clubs. Used to be sponsored by a Rotary club. Now they can exist on their own. But always now for our youth arms that still are our youth arms, we have the Interact Clubs and the Early Act Clubs. That means that they have to be sponsored by a Rotary Club. So in the same way a family, sorry, got to that too quickly. In the same way a family has certain persons with roles and responsibilities, that's what we're seeing here. And that's really important because you as an, an Interact Club, you have a whole chain that is responsible for you. And that means they will help you. That means you will get the resources that you need because you're a youth arm. And that means you will get the guidance that you need, for example, this morning's training. So your sponsor club is the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise. There are 10 clubs in Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas. So there are other Rotary Clubs and there are a couple of Rotary Act Clubs, but Nassau Sunrise is your sponsor. And then we have early act clubs who are the younger of the youth arms. So Interact is high school. Early Act is pre-high school. Any questions on that so far? So this is really overall, this is the family. When you say Rotary, Rotary International, we're big and we're wide, we're in over 220 countries, we're all over the place, all over the world. And that has to be managed. And so this is what the family is looking like. So I want us to concentrate on our little family here, but let's just look at the district. So because the district is made up of different Caribbean countries, Sometimes the person who governs that is from a different island. So it rotates. Last year, the district governor was from the Bahamas. This year, the district governor is from St. Martin. So that's him. District Governor Louis, that shouldn't have an E. District Governor Louis and his wife, Amanda. And so then we come to the Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas. So remember, you have Rotary International. Then you have zones and you have district. They have what we call our area, the Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas. And that means all the Rotary Clubs, and even though it's called Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas, it's really the Rotary Family of Bahamas. So all the Rotary Clubs, the Rotary Act Clubs, the Interact Clubs, the Early Act Clubs, and I'm gonna take you to a page that actually shows that. So there has to be somebody responsible for that. And you have, they're called assistant governors. So remember the district has a district governor and Rotary Bahamas has an assistant governor, which means they help to monitor the clubs in that particular area or island. And for us, it's not an island because we're an archipelago. So the clubs in the Bahamas, except we don't include the clubs in Grand Bahama. 
Everybody following me so far? Yay? Nay? Yes, awesome. All right, so now we're down to the Bahamas area. So we left Rotary International, we left the zone, we left the district, and we're now in the Bahamas. So we have our Rotary family right here. The, the clubs, the Rotary clubs, the Rotaract clubs, we need to change some of these, the Interact clubs and Early Act. We have 10 Rotary clubs so far, and that's pretty good for a country our size, right? We have, most of them are in New Providence. Remember the ones in Freeport and in Grand Bahama, they're in a different district. So remember I said the Rotary world is broken up into zones and districts. We're in 7020. They're in a different district, right? So we're only talking about the clubs that are in 7020. And so most of them are in New Providence, but we do have a club in Eleuthera and we do have a club in Abaco. And recently we have what we call satellite clubs. They're Rotary clubs. They're not shown here, but they're called satellite clubs. And then this means that any of these clubs can have, it's like a, it's a Rotary club. It's a part of them, but they meet separately, but they do everything, to, they do projects and stuff together. So East Nassau has a satellite club called Rotary After Dark. You may have heard about it. And Nassau, or is Nassau? Nassau Beloid has a satellite club in Cat Island. So we're in New Providence, we're in Eleuthera, we're in Abaco, and we're now in Cat Island. Cat Island is the newest member of that family, part of the family. So remember I said a family is the connection, the bond, and Summer gave us a really, really nice definition when we started. So here it is overall. We have Rotary International, altogether called Rotary. Sometimes you may hear the Rotary Foundation and I just want to throw, throw that in because especially this month, if you're attending any of the meetings of your parent club, then let me tell you, you're entitled because you're part of the family. You can say to your club advisor, to your Rotary advisor that you want to attend our meetings. And so if you're attending our meetings, you may hear something called the Rotary Foundation and that is just a charity that we support. That's where we ask people to donate money to. And once they donate money, we can do great things in the world, including in the Bahamas. And so the name binds us, Rotaract, started out as Rotary in Action. And what does somebody from Interact tell me what Interact means? Who? Next Starbucks certificate, who? I don't believe it. Nobody knows what Interact means? Rotarian Angelica, we need to speak. Any interactor knows what interact means? Okay, international and action. That's the original meet, meaning of it. So Somebody we messaged in the, the chat. Oh, they did? Um, they put- To act to, together. To, yes. Can you, close, because you're seeing act and act and act. And it's really about, we say we're people of action. So that's very close. Rotary has people of action, the different arms of the family. So that's really close. So when it started out, it needed different names. So Rotary in Action shown through the young professionals and it says international plus action. That's how they got it because they were putting youth arms all across the world. And then we have Early Act. So yes, we're acting together. So Early Act, the babies in the family. So you are the teenagers, the young professionals and the older people in this family. We have a family vision. I'm gonna skip that because of time, but this is what, when we think about the Rotary family, what do we do? We together as a family, we see a world, internationally we look, we unite, we take action, we create things we're doing in across, across the world. We're doing projects in our communities and we're making a change in ourselves. Our family motto, everybody should know the motto, service above self, right? And that means our clubs have certain constitutions. When you are trained, you will hear that your club is set up a certain way. You have a board of directors and you have something called a constitution. Every club has it. Rotary International has it. The district has it. All Rotary clubs have it. All Rotaract clubs have it. And part of it is to say that there are some things you have to do. And so for Interact, you're gonna learn that you have to do service projects. You have to do at least one for your school 
and at least one for your community. And then of course you can meet with interact clubs across the world to do projects, to do fundraising, to do fun stuff too. And I'm sure you've learned this in interact. This is what guides our family, the four way test. Do you say this in your meeting? Yes, anybody? You do, right. So this is what also makes us as a family. So when we do stuff, when we're thinking about project and when we're thinking about our actions, we, we have to have a guide. You know, like you have a Bible, you have a book that governs you. So this is our guide of the things we think say or do. So we call it the four-way test, right? And if you hear this, you will hear this hair, you will hear it in Rotary, you will hear it in Rotaract, you will hear it across the world. I want to take us to, let's hope this works, but I have it open. There's a lot that you can learn, but if you want to learn more about this family that you're a part of, here is our website, rotarybahamas.org. And there's actually a place called the RCOB family. It means Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas family. And there we are. If you click it, that's what you see. And it speaks about our family. First, it's right? about our, it tells us about Rotary Act, Interact and Early Act. And if you click any of these, you can find out more. We don't have time for that. And then it tells us about our Rotaract clubs, who they are, tells us about different arms of Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas. And if you want to find anybody, so who is your, before I, before I scroll down to the bottom of your page, let's put in the chat for me again, what's the name of your sponsor club? You can't see our screen, I'm sorry. Yes, we can. You can? Somebody said, you can, can you see the website that I'm looking yes. at? Yes, we're seeing. Maybe okay. you need to refresh your device, Angelico. Okay. So can you see the picture of the Rotarians on screen with the shirts? Is that what you're seeing? No, we're seeing the RCOB family. Okay. Right. No, we can't see what you're looking at. You're actually on the site. Right. right. Yeah, we can't right. see that. Right. All right, let me go back to the site. Sorry. Thank you. So she's right. So this is where we are. So this is the RCOB family. So we're on the, the Rotary Bahamas website. So if you need to, to see who the family members are, this is the Bahamas family. So it tells you that Rotaract, Interact, so you and Early Act are part of the Rotary Bahamas family. If you want to one day research to see what other Interact clubs are doing around the world, just click here, go to Interact. If you want to find out, okay, you're going to about to leave high school, you want to go to college, you want to join Rotaract, and Rotaract is everywhere around the world. So if you go to college in the US, in Canada, in England, anywhere, you can join a Rotaract club. And so this is our family page. And your sponsor club is Rotary Club of Nassau. So so if you want to find out, wait, I haven't seen my president in a while. I need to talk to my president. You go to the president's page. So I should say, so this is a contact page. So remember Rotary Bahamas is the area. They have assistant governors. So if you want to write the assistant governors, here we are. There are two of us. So you're hearing from me today. The other assistant governor is A.G. Ken Strong. Then we have a committee. You're going to hear from the assistant treasurer today, who's the incoming district Rotary representative. So in the same way Rotary has a district, Rotary has a district. And so the last thing is here is your president, right? So it tells you any year, this website can tell you who is the president for Nassau Sunrise. So the very last thing I want to share with you, here is the website. So if you forget everything I said today, go on the website and you will see who the RCOB family is, right? Because we don't have Time. but I think we're out of time so I just want to thank you thank you for being part of the family know that like a family probably that way. know that like a family we will support you that's why we're there you're the youth arm so we believe in you we're mentoring you we're training you to take over the world really to take over your country to be great leaders and so you have a lot of resources not, so not just in your interact club, in, in the Rotary Club that sponsored you, but because it's a family, you've seen the other Rotary Clubs can come and help you. You see the 
Rotary Bahamas area can come and help you. You can meet with the Rotary clubs in the district, they can come and help you, and then Rotary International. I hope that gave you some good information. That was awesome, AG. Carlo, I think there's just one question for you before we take you off the mic. Um, someone wants to know, why are the clubs in Grand Bahama not included? I think you alluded okay. to it, but um, perhaps you yeah. So more. they're in a district called 6990. The reason they aren't is it's just a matter of history. So you had clubs in Grand Bahama and clubs in, in New Providence. And then they had to choose um, which district they went to. And it was really, really new. Rotary was really new. And so we stayed with the Caribbean clubs. As a matter of fact, it's just because of history that they're not part of our district. Thank you so much, AG Carlo. And uh, that was really well done. I see no further questions. So with that, I thank you for your awesome presentation. And we're gonna quickly move to our next presenter. So I'll call on our director, um, Angelica to introduce our second presenter. Okay, so our second presenter for this morning, Cherise Roll is a certified public accountant who has been a Rotarian with Rotary Nassau Sunrise for almost 10 years. Over the years, positions held with the club have included treasurer and membership chair. Cherise loves everything pink, Starbucks, and enjoys travel. God is our foundation and strives to always be the change you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. Let's welcome Ms. Jerry's Roll. Thank you, Rotarian Angelica. Can everyone hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Awesome. So I'm going to start off by sharing a video. Can you enable screen sharing for me kindly? All right. Hopefully this works. See, I have to write this essay that the teacher gave last week. And it's due tomorrow morning, 20 pages all in Greek. Now, but first I'll check my Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, call my mom. Then just one more, one more page on IWaySoMuchTime.com. I'm procrastinating, all day I sit here waiting for just a perfect moment to begin. We're procrastinating. Why work we could be gaming? Agreed. Procrastination for the win. Cause my prom's a week away So I'm only eating veggies And I'm starting that today But I'm getting really hungry And those cookies look sublime Fine, I'll have just one Or two or ten Why not? It's not a crime We're procrastinating No better way than eating Cause nothing else could possibly compare I'm procrastinating It's really fascinating I know there's work to do But I don't care Oh yeah, it's on I should probably do my laundry I should probably feed the cat But right now we're playing Halo Yolo. Headshot, you take that You should probably call a doctor Never mind, it's just a scratch But your arm's gone It's a flesh wound, now come on, let's play some catch I have organized my desktop Now I'm all set up to work Wait, that picture's kind of crooked And it's driving me berserk Now I might as well just color Put my pencils one by one And my papers and my files I can't work until it's done We're procrastinating All day I sit here waiting For just the perfect moment to begin We're procrastinating You're procrastinating right now You're procrastinating Why are you still here watching? I'm sure that you got things too long ago You're procrastinating Please leave a thumbs up rating Go do your work Okay, so can anyone tell me what they think I'm going to speak about this morning? You can say it in the chat, one on mute, 
Uh, Tania says procrastinating. Procrastination. Procrastination. Deshae says procrastination. Yes, you are pretty much close to it. I will speak on time management and procrastination is the thief of time. So let's get into it. The Oxford Dictionary, powered by Google, describes time management as the ability to use one's time effectively or productively, especially at work. Now for us, work can be different. Our work involves our work in our interact clubs, our work can be at school or even at home. For our discussion today, I will use the word time as an acronym. So as a hint, there will be, there will be some prizes. <laughs> so I want everyone to do me a favor. If you don't wanna write anything down, please write down T-I-M-E. Trust me, it'll be worth it, okay? And at least write down one thing for each letter. I'm trying to help you guys here, that's a hint, okay? Probably in your bed and you're like, oh, I don't wanna write anything down, but trust me. Okay, T represents task lists. You can't manage your time without a plan. Being organized is key to saving time. And as interactors and young people in general, you have so much going on. You have a social life, you're working with the community, you have schoolwork, there's just so much going on. So let's see how the task list can be our friend. Tools to help us set up our task list can involve our cell phone. Most phones have a note feature, so you can just use your notes and write down things you have to do. A laptop, you can just open Microsoft Word and start typing up your task list or your to-do. Email, send notes to yourself or email members of the club of your board that you need to help. And a good old notebook. I love beautiful notebooks. And if you just have the normal notebook, you can just make it pretty and highlight. You don't have to stress. You just use the tool that works for you. And for our digitally savvy young persons, I found an app. There are lots of free apps, but Google has one by the name of Google Keep. And it allows you to share your list with contacts, set reminders to yourself, record voice notes. Google Keep's motto is always within reach. And the good thing is a lot of us have different tools. So you can share your task list across your cell phone, your laptop, or your tablet. So it's a good app if you're interested. However, I encourage you all, write your task list down. Write your plan down, your ideas, your to-dos. For example, if your interact meetings are held every two weeks, include those dates in your calendar now. In fact, include two reminders. One, that your interact meeting is coming up or that the meeting is today, for example. And a second reminder to plan for the meeting. As a board member, you have a duty to show up and represent Rotary in a responsible way, not only to your club, but in the wider community. And for those who don't have your Interact Handbook, reach out to your advisors after the session today. I can always be forward to the members in our club as well for the Leadership Academy. But in your Interact Handbook, chapter two is about how to operate the, the club and explains the roles of the board members, such as the president or the secretary. And there's a lot of usage of the word plan. And so they're encouraging you to use the list. The next letter we're gonna look at is I. I represents involve the right people, okay? I for involve the right people. So you have your task, listen to your plan, think to yourself, how am I gonna get this done? There's a board for a reason. Use each other, work together. As you get to know each other more, you'll start to see who has certain gifts and talents. So for the artists among you, perhaps they can help with flyers and posters. There may be someone who is a young chef, maybe they will do the cupcakes for the events, as well as you may have someone who is social and fearless, and perhaps that individual will welcome people at the different club sessions. However, talents, whatever talents persons have, use them. 
also think about, can I get all these things done by myself? No. If there's a bake sale happening, the secretary cannot do the poster, call the club members and bake all the goods. It's impossible. Tasks should have been split up at step one, our task list phase. However, if that wasn't done, do not stress about it. Ask for help. Your faculty advisor, your board members, your club members, your Rotarians and friends. Have we heard about teamwork makes the dream work? So before we move on to the third letter in the acronym, remember T is for task list, I is for involve the right people. Are you guys with me? Let me see a thumbs up or a yeah, I'm with you in the chat. We're moving on to M in our acronym of time. And M represents method to the madness. So the madness may be the list you created at step one. All right, Tania was with me. I see the thumbs up. Or you may still be feeling a bit stressed because you're like, do I have the right people for this interact service project? Don't stress. We're going to use the ABC method at this point. A means must be completed today. B means would be nice to finish today. C means can be pushed to tomorrow if necessary. And this is where that video of I'm procrastinating comes in, okay? We don't want procrastination to show up and steal our time. So A must happen. Without exception, you must turn in that school assignment, for example. You must wash those dishes at home. And best of all, you must call all club members to be at the beach cleanup this Saturday, okay? The option does not give you the opportunity to wait until Friday before the beach event, which would be today, Saturday, to call everyone and say, come on out, it's too late. You have to call persons in advance so that you can have a successful attendance at the event. Option B gives you a little flexibility. Would be nice to finish today. However, on the Friday before the beach cleanup, it's still late. You shouldn't be that flexible with calling your club members the Friday before the beach cleanup. Option B kind of allows you to do this on the Tuesday before the event or the Wednesday. It gives you the flexibility to say on Tuesday, oh, it would be good to call everyone today. But you know what? It gives you until Wednesday to call everyone. You don't want to be late. So just be wise when using these options. And lastly, Option C should never be used the week before an event. Option C means can be pushed to tomorrow if necessary. Use option C about two weeks out from your beach cleanup event. So if the beach cleanup was today, you should have called everyone kind of, you should have used option C last week so that by Tuesday of this week, you're like, I gotta get this done today. So pretty much when you use the ABC method, it's not to get tasks done the Friday before the event. It's to kind of give you some flexibility as interactors, young people with schedules, social life, schoolwork, home chores, the ability to still get your interact duties done and flourish in your other activities, okay? The last letter, E, represents execute the task. E represents execute the task. And so we have a task list from step one. So we're intentional, we're not procrastinating. Step two, we've got the right people. And step three, we're just really figuring it out, making sure we have things allotted with sufficient time where we do not procrastinate and where we get our tasks done, okay? So for example, if the beach cleanup was or today, or if you have other things to do as the president or the secretary, Perhaps you can schedule time. Tuesday night, you'll spend 30 minutes on interact duties. Thursday night, you may spend an hour. Use your task list and prioritize how things will work out for you. It doesn't benefit anybody if you can't shine your light on your awesomeness as interactors. So at this stage, don't forget to ask for help. I can't say it enough. Ask the Rotarian advisor, the faculty advisor, even me, if you remember my name from today and you can reach out to me, I will do my best to help you remember that. So I feel like everyone kind of knows some of the things I talked about today, some of the tips I discussed here. With a plan, you won't be led to procrastinate 
and you will strike the right balance between all the activities in your life, your interact duties, your school duties, and your social life, okay? So to wrap up my presentation, I do have two questions, two prizes, Starbucks gift certificates. If you're in my bio, I love coffee, I love Starbucks. So the first question, I'm watching the chat. I'm looking for the first person after I ask the question. Can someone tell me what T and I stands for? Can someone tell me what the T and the I stands for in the acronym? All right, Tania says, and I hope I'm saying your name right, Miss Lady Collie. Okay. I got Kenya responding. T is for taskless. I is for involve the right people. Shakira says taskless. Kenya says taskless. Excellent ladies. Just Shay is chiming in taskless. Involve the right people. Awesome guys. I believe this win will go to Lady Kali. However, you are all winners and there's still one more opportunity. So keep your hands on the buzzer. I'm gonna say the second question now. Can someone tell me what the M and the E stands for? I'm looking, I'm watching. Oh my gosh. Somewhere. They type so fast. Oh my God. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> M is for method to madness and E is for execute the task. Excellent. You are all winners. I'm going to record all the names and everyone will get a prize. Okay, so that's more than two. We got Summer will get one. Kenya will get one. Jashe will get one. Shakira and Lady Kali. All right, so that's five. Lady Rosarian John F. Scott, right? So I'm gonna get those to you, okay? Thank you for participating. Have a great day. And remember, don't procrastinate, okay? Sing the song. It's on YouTube. It's called Procrastinating. And I'll send it out to your youth leaders as well. Have a great day. Excellent. That was simply brilliant, 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 director. Jerice. Okay, so congratulations to our winners. I don't know how they do it, but our interactors, they type really fast. I'm, I'm sure some Rotarians are still trying to type the words, but never mind, the prizes are already gone. And so without further ado, let me call again on our director Angelica to introduce our next speaker. Don't All right. I I hope you all are having fun. I see everybody is getting engaged now. So let's keep it rolling. Our next speaker for this morning, our PAG Karen Pinder is a vice president and risk manager at EFG Bank and Trust Limited. In this capacity, she is responsible for the implementation of the bank's risk control framework throughout the institution. She is a member of the board of directors audit and risk committee and the bank's management committee, where she previously served as secretary with responsibility for enhancing corporate governance. She is a sustaining member of the Professional Risk Managers International Association and is enrolled in the Professional Risk Manager designation program with only one of four exams pending to complete. She has served on the board of CFA, Chartered Financial Analysts Society of the Bahamas, in a variety of capacities, including as president. She has completed the Canadian Chief Compliance Officer Certificate Program, the Chartered Alternative Investment Analyst and Chartered Financial Analyst Programs. She also passed both Series 7 and Series 6 license exams in the USA. She graduated from the University of Florida with a bachelor's degree in business administration majoring in economics with a concentration in finance. Karen has worked directly on fundraisers or as a board member of a variety of community-minded nonprofit organizations in the Bahamas. As a member of the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise, PAG Karen has 16 years of perfect attendance and has served on the board or as a committee chair since shortly after joining the club in 2004 including president and currently as treasurer. She's a proud recipient of the club's Service Above Self Award. Beyond the club level, she served as the Bahamas' first female assistant governor responsible for the Bahamas East Area of Rotary International District 7020, which at the time covered the Rotary Clubs of Nassau, Abaco, East Nassau, and Nassau Sunrise. 
Karen also served as Rotary Leadership Institute Director for District 1720 and Area Trainer for the Bahamas. She currently serves on the 2021-2022 District Team as Club of the Month Chair and serves as the Zone 34 level as Innovative, innovative Club Advocate for District 1720. As a past assistant governor, she serves on the Rotary Club of the Bahamas Disaster Relief Committee in an oversight role. On the Disaster Relief Committee, she is the backup for the committee secretary and is a member of both the corporate governance and public relations subcommittees. As a passionate advocate of our charity of choice, the Rotary Foundation, she walks the talk as a Paul Harris Society member charter member of the Polio Plus Society of District 7020, Bequest Society member, and a major donor. She loves to travel and has attended many district conferences and IR conventions as her schedule permits. While away from Nassau, she seeks out and visits other Rotary clubs where, wherever possible. She is an avid sports fan and enjoys watching documentary and independent films. During the recent COVID-19 shelter-in-place time period, she morphed from an amateur food critic to an amateur chef. Let's welcome PAG Karen. Hi there, good morning everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, so my job today is to talk a little bit about the money. Um, it's, it's all about the money. We all know nothing really can happen without, without cash or money to make it happen. Um, so if you'll allow me to share my screen. Yes, you are able to share. Okay, one second. Okay, so we're going to talk today about budgeting and fundraising and a little bit more than that. So first, we're going to talk about the importance of the club treasurer, um, some of their responsibilities, financial planning, also known as budgeting, uh, managing funds, reporting, best practices, fundraising, and then we'll open it up to some questions and, and comments. So, um, but feel free if you have questions to just pop it in the chat or unmute yourself and, and ask as we go through the presentation. I want it to be as interactive as it, it can be, okay? Everyone with me, let me know. Let me see some dollar signs in the chat. Let me know you're still paying attention. It's all about the Benjamins. All right, so uh, let me ask a question. What do you think is important about having a, a treasurer on the board? Why is that important? Anyone has an answer? We have some Starbucks certificates. I can answer. Funds can be properly managed. Excellent summer. Let's hear from someone else. I can answer. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so that the club can keep in track with their finances. Exactly, to manage the money. Okay, so who was that who just spoke? Let me get your name. Um, Kenya McGregor. Kenya, thank you, Kenya. And we also have Romika who says uh, it's important to manage money, um, how much money spent or the income, very good. And then we had Summer as well with a comment. So let's take a look at some other important reasons uh, why, it's, why the treasure role is so pivotal towards your club. Um, it ensures good governance over the club's financial resources. It allows you to optimize the use of your funds and really important, and this is um, pivotal to what Rotary stands for, is it maintains the trust of your members, the school and the community. It's, it, in one word, it's accountability. Um, what does accountability mean to you? Let me hear from someone. What does it mean when you say that you're accountable? Anyone, don't be shy. What does it mean to be accountable? Okay, there's Jennifer with taking responsibility. 
keeping good records, that you're responsible for something. Excellent, you're dependable. Yeah, these are all important. And it comes down to trust, right? That you can be trustworthy. And this is so important, um, especially with Rotary, where we um, do a lot of fundraising. Um, it's important that people know that when they donate or they sponsor an event, that the money is gonna be used responsibly and it's gonna go for, for the intended purpose. Um, Rotary has a very strong tradition of being highly accountable and transparent. And we're actually known for this. Um, we're rated the top um, four stars with Charity Navigator for the Rotary Foundation. So this is the top level. It means that we use our money very responsibly. We spend very little on administration. And we encourage that these attributes are are adopted by our Rotary family. So Interact as well. We want to make sure that our Interact members, our club treasurers, take their role seriously and do it responsibly and that the club approaches all of its efforts in this way. Any questions or comments so far? All right, so let's take a look. Some of the responsibilities of the treasurer include develop a financial plan. And this is important. It's not something that the treasurer does in isolation, but they do it with the involvement of the president and the board. So one approach that you could take is uh, reach out to your chairs, find out what activities they wanna plan for the year and develop the budget from a bottom up perspective. Engage those board members. The treasurer is also responsible for managing funds. So collecting revenue and making disbursements. They also are in charge of billing and collecting membership dues. Um, just wanna hear from you guys. Um, how much are your annual dues? Uh, Leadership Academy is here, Kingsway is here, Government High. What are the dues that you pay as a member? Can anyone speak to that? How about the advisors? Are you aware of what, what the members are paying in dues? Hi, good. Um, good morning. Um, this is the advisor from Government High, um, Mrs. Lightborn. Um, Hi, Ms. Usually, Lightborn. They would, usually they would pay a dollar um, per meeting, um, but because we're not face-to-face, -face, it's difficult to collect dues mm -hmm. at this time. <laughs> Yes, but usually they'll pay a dollar per meeting and then they pay dues based on their lateness as well. If they come to meetings late, they would pay and that's mm -hmm. also a dollar. Okay, good. Any other clubs, Leadership Academy, Kingsway? Are you guys paying dues or are you also under the COVID um, scenario where you're not in person so you're not handling the dues in this way? Anyone? Okay, let's see, there's something in the chat, one second. Yeah, okay, so still under the COVID scenario, gotcha. All right, so moving along to another responsibility for the treasurer is to maintain records. Um, and these records should also, and should any of your fellow club members wanna look at them, or even your sponsor club, should they wanna to, to take a look and see how your club is doing in terms of managing its finances. Um, the treasurers should also produce and present financial reports. And more importantly, they should serve as an advisor to the board and committees. Also, it's important to be a team player and support events and projects. And most of all, do everything with the spirit of fun. You wanna make sure that at all times, you're enjoying your interact experience and helping your members to do the same. So now if we look at budgeting. So the budget is essentially the financial plan that reflects the club's annual plan. And I mentioned this earlier, you know, a good budget really develops from the ground up. You take a look at what you want to do. Do you want to have uh, uh, an event that supports polio? Um, what would that look like? How much money would you need? Do you want to do a community beach cleanup? 
Do you need to consider that you need to allocate, allocate resources for that? Do you wanna do an international project? Do you wanna do a friendship exchange? These are all things that you should consider and plan for in your budget because sound financial planning is really the key to your club success. You wanna be able to plan to make sure you have the resources that you need in order to execute the activities that you want to do and the goals that you wanna achieve. You could also include in your budget sponsorship what do you anticipate that the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise will help you with in terms of some of your needs? I know recently um, Youth Services Director Angelica approached me as the Sunrise Club treasurer and said, you know, I want to get pens for the Interact Clubs. So that was an expense that your club itself didn't have to pay, but you could budget that our club was going to sponsor for that. So you also want to consider the administrative costs. Do you want to get any banners? Do you want to get any signs made up? What, what would that look like? Do you need to raise money for that? Do you need to ask members to help pay for it? Or do you want to seek sponsors? You should also prepare separate act, um, budgets for each activity. So if you're planning a bake sale, you want to plan a budget for that. If you're planning a community event, you should plan a separate budget for that. When you consider these budgets, you should also plan for contingencies. What if something goes wrong? What if, it, what if we got a quote for buying the, um, the gloves that we need for the beach cleanup, but when we actually go to buy them, they cost more. So you wanna allow for a little bit of um, sort of like a line item amount for miscellaneous or unexpected expenses. And then in terms of your overall budget, you should seek the approval of the board as well. As treasurer, you should also be checking in to make sure that the, the directors and committee chairs are paying attention to their budget and are being guided accordingly. Of course, things change, things happen. So there is room for flexibility and you wanna build that in but you wanna make sure that the board is always um, kept abreast of those changes. And finally, and most importantly, you wanna communicate this financial plan to your members. So everyone has a sense of what's going on with your club. So I'll just pause here, cause that was a lot about budgeting. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? No? Okay, let's move along towards managing funds. So there's two aspects to managing funds. There's the income side and the expense side. So in terms of income, we talked a little bit about club dues. Um, that's kind of off the table this year with COVID, um, but in an ordinary year, you would consider these club dues as income. Also donations that you may receive, event revenue, so that would be the money that you earn at your bake sale, for instance. Also any sponsorships that you may receive and then just a general other revenue that you would consider. In terms of expenses, um, the dues really, that should be deleted, sorry about that. Um, but you do have other expenses such as programs, um, meeting expenses. So like if you wanted to have a pizza, for instance, um, that you would consider if you have refreshments at your meeting, those kinds of things. Then administrative expenses, um, such as um, banners or um, signs for your club meetings, something like that. And as well as if you sponsor something else. So if you sponsor an activity or an event. In terms of reporting, um, this would really depend on your club and the size of your club, but it's recommended that you would report on any money you have on hand at the beginning and end of the month, along with the receipts with the source clearly indicated, as well as any payments that were made detailing what the purpose was and to whom the payment was made. And this all speaks to the transparency and accountability that we talked about earlier. 
and the need to be accountable. Of course, annually, there should be a final report to summarize the year's activity. And this final report should be presented to the club as well as to the incoming treasurer. And it should serve as part of the club's permanent record, which is maintained by the club secretary. That's an important document as well, because for the incoming administration, so the administration that will follow behind you, they can take a look back and see um, what were some of the activities, how they were structured, how much they cost, what potential money was earned at the different events. And it can really be um, some valuable information for the, the board members and leaders that follow after you. In terms of best practices for your club treasurer, you should really ensure that you address any issues with the outgoing treasurer, so the person who was before you. Um, you should also be sure that you're doing a budgeting process, as we discussed in detail a few minutes ago, monitoring the budget, as well as analyzing the budget. So if mid-year you see that you've allocated this amount of money towards an expense, and you see now that you're not actually going to carry forward with that expense, or as I gave an example earlier, the membership pins actually are paid for by your sponsor club, you then know you might have money that you could reallocate to something else. Or if you had planned an event that you decide you no longer want to do, or you have an opportunity to do something new, this is where you can reallocate some of your budget into something different. You should also have regular reporting to the board and membership and maintain your records using a reporting system and then plan for succession. So any questions on best practices? Okay, now let's talk about fundraising. And this is where I wanna hear from you. It's really important to be creative and innovative. Does anyone have an idea during this COVID time of an innovative and creative fundraiser that you've seen? Since we're all Zooming and online, let's see, any, any ideas? Okay, yeah, you can, I see you. Go ahead. No, I was just about to tell you there was a question in the chat before you went to take in the ideas. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Angelica. Okay, so let's address that now from Jennifer. Um, what is the number one characteristic you think a treasurer must have? Um, I would say it's uh, attention to detail and responsibility. I would say those two things are, are really important for a treasurer. So let's go back to fundraiser, fundraising. Um, any other ideas for innovative and creative fundraising? I see bake sale is there. How about something involving the Zoom environment? Have you seen anything? You have any ideas of something that you could initiate? Let's hear from you. Okay, this is excellent from Ray, bracelets and ribbons to raise awareness for different cancers. Yes, that's a great idea. A virtual game night, yeah, that's great. A reading session on Zoom from Jennifer. Excellent, so those are all some great ideas. A virtual movie night, yes, excellent. Creating huge banners or paintings to display awareness of clubs. Okay, great. And Tanya says a talent night. All right. Those are some really good ideas. So let's look back at fundraisers. Um, you really should start with a goal and a purpose in mind. So what do you hope to achieve and why are you doing it? This is important for um, getting the buy-in from members. So I see Donna, if you have your hand raised. Yeah, I was just gonna share an idea I saw in a international group chat and they had a project called Pancakes for a Purpose. 
that's the Rotary Club of Harrisburg. And what they did, they prepared um, pancake um, breakfast mixes. So whether it was the pancake mix or whatever goes into a pancake, and they um, they got persons to pay for it online, and then they delivered their pancakes, their little bags of um, ingredients for the pancakes, okay. and then they had a virtual breakfast where everyone made their pancakes on a Zoom event, and had breakfast to a virtual bre pancake breakfast together, and the funds that were raised. They raised actually twenty thousand dollars doing that. Can you imagine? Wow! They raised yes. Yeah, so they posted it on yes. They posted it on social media, and they asked persons to buy their tickets. And then once they bought tickets, they shipped or delivered to them these pancake bags with the items to make your pancake. And then of course that you you would share it on your favorite social media platform with the hashtag pancakes for purpose. And then they actually ate their pancakes together on Zoom. I thought that was a neat idea. But what was yeah. most important was that they raised $20,000 doing that. I don't know what currency it is, but in any currency, $20,000. 20, <laughs> 20, yes. Especially in US or Bahamian dollars, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to share that with you guys. And maybe one of our clubs here would want to take on something like that. I think that is something that a lot of um, Bahamians love pancakes with some grits or some um, eggs or whatever the case may be. And perhaps that's something the clubs could consider as a joint product um, project. Sounds good. Thank you for that, Donna. Um, so I want to hear from you about buy-in. Why is it important to get buy-in from your fellow club members? Let's hear from you. Donna, is that with your hand raised again, or that was from before? Oh, no, I need to put my hand down. Sorry, that was before. No problem. So when you're trying to do a fundraiser, like a bake sale, um, why is it important to get buy-in from your members? Anyone in the chat? You can just open your mic and let me know. I think during Jerisa's presentation, she talked about a bake sale and the fact you don't want one person having to do everything, right? So by getting buy-in from other people, you can get more more hands on deck to assist with the project. You can also get more people talking about it, sharing it on their social media platforms and making an overall more successful event. You should also try to seek out partners and sponsors and donations in kind. This one is gonna be a prize a prize for the first person to tell me what is meant by donations in kind. What does that mean? Anyone? Rotarians, you can't answer. This is only for the interactors. Who's going to be first? Leadership, Kingsway, GHS. Who knows what it means to have a donation in kind? Oops, sorry. Okay, I see someone in the chat. Let's see. A gift instead of money. Yeah, essentially that's it. Um, so instead of donating dollars, it would be um, donating maybe ingredients towards making cupcakes for your bake sale. Kenya also with a donation other than money. Right. It could also be services, you know, so it could be someone who's prepared to um, do, uh, let's say, developing your flyer. So the graphic arts work associated with a flyer that you want to use for your bake sale and they don't charge you for it. That could also be considered a donation in kind. So um, Tenia was the first one with the answer. So you got the prize. Um, what school are you with, Tania? Am I saying your name right? 
Can you open your mic or put in the chat? Let's hear where you're from. Government high, all right, way to go. What could happen? What could go wrong if you're planning a bake sale? Anyone have any ideas? How could you plan for something that might go wrong with your bake sale? A low turnout, yeah. So then you have to think about what's going to happen at the end of the day, and you have all of these baked goods left. You should think about where you would want to donate them to, right? Or if you just would like members to take them home, or maybe another plan would be just to send out a blitz um, through your social media channels, um, maybe to your sponsor club and say, um, in the next 30 minutes, everything is 50% off. So you want to come up with all of these thoughts about what could go wrong and how you will deal with it, you wanna do that in advance. So that if something happens, you already know, or you have an idea of how you'll handle it and you'll help to make the best out of something that goes wrong. Another thing, if you're planning like bigger events, oftentimes outdoor events, for instance, it's always important to think of the weather. What if all of a sudden there's going to be uh, you know, you look at the weather forecast a week out, it looks great. And then that morning it looks overcast. You should have a plan in advance to know at what point will you cancel the event? Or do you wanna to plan to have an indoor venue? Or do you wanna to plan to have a tent? So all of these things you should think about in advance. You should also that ensure, ensure that you have control systems in place to collect and handle the money as well as other assets. So if you have, um, for instance, um, a ticket situation, you wanna make sure that you, you're keeping control of how many tickets you've sold, who is paid in advance. You wanna make sure that there's like one single entry point so that people can't get into your event without showing their ticket or paying. And you wanna make sure that if you have, for instance, um, prizes on display, you wanna make sure that someone is monitoring the display so that no one can just put it in their bag, for instance. These are all things that you should consider when you think of having these fundraiser events. You don't want anything to get lost or any revenue to go uncollected. You don't want people sneaking in the back door, for instance. So these are all things you should think about. You should also ensure that it's a well planned out event in terms of you want to map out the flow of the event, what's going to happen, who's going to do what, what the timing of each event looks like, how many people will you need? What if you have a, a larger group of people coming than you expected? You should always think of having extra people on hand to assist in case you need them or something unexpected happens, you'll have people who can help. You should also consider your promotion strategy. We talked about flyers earlier, but there's other ways to promote your event. And you wanna consider what's appropriate for the size and scope of your event, as well as the audience of your event. So for a fundraiser, such as a bake sale, where you're not necessarily gonna be generating a huge amount of revenue, you don't necessarily wanna spend a huge amount in making fancy flyers and getting them all printed and putting them on all, all the cars in the parking lot. You know, you may not get a return on the money that you're expecting if you put a lot of, you know, advertising into a relatively low revenue generating event. So you wanna think carefully and strategically about your promotion strategy. But most importantly, you wanna make sure you have a good time because that's what it's all about with Interact. It's serving your community and having fun while you do it. So I hope you um, learned something today about the treasurer's role, about how important it is to budget, as well as some things to ensure that you have awesome fundraising events. So I'll go now to uh, open the floor for any questions or comments.
Can I have a representative from each club tell me one thing that you learned today during this presentation, one of your key takeaways? I think we have three more certificates that we can give out, one for each uh, participant from each school. Okay, I see one person in the chat. You should always have a backup plan. Yes, excellent. So just shy, what school are you with? And Tania, how to plan a successful event. Excellent. And we know Tania is GHS. And Ray is a treasurer, must be accountable with Leadership Academy. Summer, strategically think about how you are spending money and saving money. Excellent. So just to make sure we have a winner from every school, um, just shy, which school are you with? Joshe, Joshe is with Leadership Academy. Okay, so we have just, just shy with Leadership Academy, Tania with GHS, I think we need someone with Kingsway and that's Ray, okay. Excellent, a winner from each school. Well, thank you so much um for your time this morning i hope you gained something from it i still see some comments coming in kenya strategically thinking about a way to make money i love it that's a great takeaway yes that's one thing I, i'm always advocating for is you know it's great to do an event but but think strategically about it are you going to make that profit margin that you want excellent okay well Feel free to reach out to me should you have any questions or comments later. I'll make myself available. Thank you so much, everyone. Back over okay. to you. Yeah, that was simply awesome. Thank you so much, PAG Karen. You may stop sharing your screen now. <laughs> and uh, before we move to our next presenter, we are going to have a little fun activity. And let me tell you, this Rotarian who is going to follow right now, she is fun on steroids. Help me, interactors and Rotarians, give a warm welcome to Rotarian Seafield Moss. Woo, 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 woo. Good morning, everybody. I have to live up to that. Oh my God, be done that. Russia, Russia. <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Can everyone hear me? I can't hear any. Okay, great. Now, I have a question for you guys. Are you enjoying yourselves thus far? I need y'all to unmute those mics. I need to hear y'all. No, 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 no. I don't want to see the chat. We're not yes, going in the chat. Tell yes, me. Yes. Let me hear you. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. You guys have been so interactive. That is good. We're just loving it. Okay. Now. Have you gotten lots of information, ideas, tips for leadership success? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Awesome, awesome. That is what we like to hear. So we have a quick activity for you. Just a breather, just so you're gonna have some fun. Stretch your arms, stretch your legs. This is our leadership scavenger hunt, okay? Now, first things first. I need those cameras on, please and thank you. It's a scavenger hunt, so we need proof, right? Just like how A.G. Carla said earlier, is it the truth? Come on, turn those cameras on. Let me see. Tania, everybody, come on. Yay, awesome, awesome. Now, here are the rules. You guys are only finding five items, okay? This is going to be quick. Five items. And you have five seconds to find each item. So, y'all ready? Let me hear you. You ready? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> the first item is a pencil. Let me see. You guys have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Y'all love your pencil? Pull it up, pull it up, Kenya. I see your pencil. Tania, I see your pencil. That is awesome. Okay, item number two, a paper clip. 
You have five seconds. Five. This one is a bit harder. Four, three, two, one. Any paper clips? I don't see anybody with a paper clip. I see Jashay laughing. <laughs> Any paper clips? None? Okay, that's fine. Don't worry, we're moving on. Item number three. Find an eraser. This should be easy. Your pencil, man. Come on, let's go. Eraser, you got it. I mean, Tania. Anyone else? Eraser? I have one. Romika, I see you. I see you. All right. Item number four. Y'all ready? It is a rubber band. Five seconds. Go, go, go. Five, four, three, two. You, Kenya's on the ball, man. She, she's just rolling with this. Who else? Romika, I see you. I see you. Anyone else? Jennifer, I see you too. Yes, man. You're just awesome. Like all the prizes going out today. My goodness. All right. Now, the fifth item. Y'all listening to me? Y'all hearing me? Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this one? Item number five. Y'all ready? I can't hear. I can't hear. What's going on? Y'all ready? Yes, mom. Okay. okay. Yes, so you guys know it. Okay, that's why. Item number five is a star. Come on. Any star, any shape. Listen, a star shape. A sticker, picture on your phone. Pull it up, pull it up quickly. Let's go. Let's go. Five seconds. Five. Four, three, two, Tania, not Tania on the ball. Tania is on the ball. Who else? Anyone else? I just, I she drew it. <laughs> Quick thinking. I absolutely love it. All right. Now, question for you. Who found five items? Oh, she, <laughs> Rumika pulled a curtain and it has a star on it. That is so cute. I am loving it. Okay. So who found all five items? Let me see your hand. You could unmute. Let me see. Let me see. Anybody have five? No. Okay. Who found four? Who found four? Ramika found four. Janae found four. That is awesome. That is awesome. Jashai found four. Okay. Seems like we're going to have to find it. I mean, have a tiebreaker today. Y'all ready for this tiebreaker? That is not a problem because we have a prize. We actually have two prizes. So let's do a tiebreaker and then we'll do first and second. All right, y'all ready? Y'all listening to me? Final tiebreaking item is a yellow crayon. Come on, anybody? A yellow crayon, yellow marker, that's fine. <laughs> Kenya, got it. Awesome. That is awesome. So Kenya McGregor is our winner. Director Angelica, you making notes, right? You taking notes. You got her, man. She, listen. Yes, Kenya, I got it. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Director Angelica will hook you right up. And not only that, but girl, you got bragging rights. Like, hello. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. So you guys I have a question for you. Just a quick question. Why do you guys have any idea why we asked you guys to find these items? They're the everyday the items, the aren't they? Happy. Yes, you got it, Kenya. Indeed. That was Kenya, right? Who was speaking? No, mom, it's Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer, awesome. Yes, that's indeed true. These are everyday items, and there's a special meaning behind each and every one of these items. Now, y'all listening to me, right? I want y'all to hear this and hear this good. These everyday items are constant reminders for you as leaders. Now, can anyone guess the significance of the pencil? What do you think the pencil means? Any ideas? No. The pencil is a reminder for you. Yes, exactly, Tania, to write down your ideas. No matter how small you think they are, no matter how insignificant, trust me, they are important and you have to write them down. Just like Director Therese said earlier, okay? Now, can anyone guess the significance of the paper clip? Any idea? 
the paper clip is a reminder to you all to hold it together. <laughs> and, yeah, to keep papers in order, um, Tania said in the chat, to keep items together. But it goes a bit further. That is a reminder for you guys to hold your club together. You can do it. You are the leaders. You are the glue. You inspire your teams. You build hope and you build trust. Okay? So that is a reminder for you guys to hold your clubs together. Can anyone guess the significance of the eraser? I guess you're typing in the chat. Anyone? The eraser reminds you that it is okay to make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. We are all human. Yes, to erase any mistakes. Can you got it? To erase any mistakes. You know, we're all human. All you have to do is own up to it, communicate the way forward, ask for advice from a trusted advisor. We're all here for you. But remember, it is okay to make a mistake. Y'all following me? All right. Wow. So the fourth item. Y'all remember what it was? Y'all remember? What was item number four? The rubber That's band, the right? <laughs> The rubber band was item number four. All right, what does that signify? That is a reminder for you all to learn to bounce back if or when you fail. It is not the end. Failure is not the end of all. Keep moving forward. And I think that goes hand in hand on what PAG Karen was just talking about having a backup plan, correct? So what is the next plan? Where do we go from here? Don't worry about that failure. Don't worry about that setback. That, that's just a dump in the road. Continue moving forward. Y'all with me? Now the fifth item was what? You remember? The star, um, come on, man. Like we had drawings, we had y'all um, yucking the, um, the curtain, yo, yo, was right on the ball, man, with these things. So what does the star remind us of? It reminds us to make your goals and to reach for the star. Yes, you go, girl, Janae, you are a star. Amen, I love that. Oh, so the star reminds us to make your goals and reach for the stars. Remember, you can do anything, you can be anything, Never let anyone limit you. I don't care who it is, all right? You define how far you go. You define where you go, not people, not circumstances. Y'all listening to me? Look at yourselves in the mirror every single day and you speak it into existence. You declare who you will be and where you are gonna go, all right? I guarantee you guys, y'all can do it, okay? Now, we had one tiebreaker, and that was a yellow marker or crayon. What is the reminder with that? Can y'all guess? Can y'all guess? The yellow marker or crayon is a reminder to shine bright. And that is what I leave you guys with today. All right? So you guys are gonna remember what these items signify? Yes, right? Unmute for me. Come on. I want to hear y'all. I want to hear y'all before I go. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Yes, awesome. Yes, Stop. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. And so, who was our winner today? Who has bragging rights? She's raising yeah, her Kenya. hand. Very shy. <laughs> Kenya has bragging rights today. And listen, we have to give Romika something because she she was just on the ball. You guys are just on the ball. So you two, please reach out to Director Angelica, all right? I'll turn it over to P.E. Darnath now. Y'all take care. Great job, great job. Guys, I told you she was fun on steroids. So we're moving right along. I know we are running a little bit behind time, but guys, we have two other presenters 
and they're going to be fabulous. So I'll hand over right away to uh, Director Angelica to introduce our next speaker, past President Tanya. All right, so our PP Tanya Woodside is a charter member and past president of the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise. She has held various positions at the local and district level. She is a Paul Harris Fellow and a major donor. Tanya is also a two-time Rotarian of the Year. Outside of Rotary, she is the Managing Director for Woodside Insurance Brokerage Limited. In her spare time, she enjoys reading, traveling, and working with young people in helping them achieve their goals. Let us welcome PP Tanya. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, past president Angelica. Everyone, I know this has been such a wonderful training. Even I, sitting here as a veteran, as I like to say that I am, I'm not gonna tell my age, I felt like I gained some new knowledge today. So congratulations to you being here and having this opportunity to have this world training here in the Interact world. So if we can just allow me to share the screen. You should be able to, one second. Um... I've enabled it. Uh, okay. 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 Great. Well, thank you so much. Can everyone hear me? Great. Loud and clear. Awesome, thank you so much. So my purpose today is to speak about building communities through service. There are two learning objectives for the purpose of my presentation. Number one, identify the steps of a successful service project. And two, determine a balanced program of service for the club. The presentations that you would have gotten earlier today, I will now try to interact those in to my presentation because community service, those areas that were discussed earlier, family of Rotary, time managing, budgeting, the financial um, prudence of the club and being strategic are all things that are very important when we talk about community service in organizing events within our clubs. So earlier, A.G. Karen, A.G. Kala spoke about the Interact Club as being a part of our family of Rotary. The things that we do in Rotary are very similar to what you will do within your club. Interact Clubs are nonprofit, non-political international service organizations, similar to Rotary. Yours, however, has a younger population. Interact Clubs bring together young people ages 12 to 18 to develop leadership skills while discovering the power of service above self. And hopefully you have fun along the way. A part of the interact mandate, a club shall undertake among its activities at least two major projects annually. One designed to serve the school or community and want to promote international understanding. Can someone tell me what international understanding means? Anyone in the chat? Um, Angelica may need to help me with this. I can't see the chat. Nothing in the chat as yet. Okay, all right. So international understanding, a part of Rotary's mission, we provide service to others, promote integrity and advance world understanding, goodwill and peace through our fellowship of business professionals and community leaders. 
So it's about creating the opportunity for goodwill. Each project shall in involve all or most of the members. Okay, <clears throat> my screen is not moving. Service projects, like Rotary, the, the Interact have the same motto, which is service above self. Service above self is Rotary's foremost guiding principles, and we apply it in every aspect of what we do within the Interact Clubs. Interact Club service projects are designed to improve the quality of life at home and abroad. Projects often address today's most critical issues, such as violence, drug abuse, AIDS, hunger, the environment, disaster relief, and illiteracy. When we talk about service within Rotary, we have six avenues of service. It is these avenues that we determine what projects we will do. Number one, prevention and resolution of conflicts and the promotion of peace. Number two, prevention and treatment of disease. Number three, water cleanliness. Number, three, number four, mother and child health. Number five, basic education and literacy. And number six, economic and community development. Service projects. Just to help you understand how service projects committees work. Within Rotary, and the same for your club. When a committee is formed, there is a leader. One person serves as the leader, as the committee chair. However, no committee is a committee of one. It is very important that we all recognize that for anything to happen with any club, we must have the involvement of people. We all volunteer to be a part of that. So the best way that we can make sure that people stay motivated and want to be a part of a committee is that we meet these certain foundation tips and how to make the committee effective. For any committee, number one, clarity define the committee's purpose. Why are you having this committee? And what is the responsibility of the committee? Number two, the agenda. Always have a meeting agenda. And number two, establishing the goals upfront as to why this committee is here. What do you hope to accomplish? Make sure that at every meeting within that agenda, you outline what are the goals that you're hoping to achieve within that committee meeting. And number four, close all meetings with an action plan as to who would be responsible for the various things required. So in this, we're talking about the different principles. A committee will work to do projects that are either hands-on that involve the club members. And the good thing about this is that when you do hands-on projects similar to maybe painting, um, these are things that people are action and they're doing things together as a group. Um, they take ownership in that because they're very much a part of it. Um, hands-on also to me is when we get the input of the committee members to be a part of that planning and to making that event happen make Interact the prime mover and face of the project. So while we may do things as an Interact Club with Rotaract, Rotary, Rotaract, um, if it is your project, I think it's very important that the Interactors, that you stand out as the face of the project. Many times we see the photos, um, the Rotaract and Interacts are somewhat in the background. We wanna make sure if it is your project that you're in the front, that everyone is aware that this is an Interact product. Pro project. Deliver to community what it needs, not what you think it needs. And this is very important. So when we start to think about community projects that you want to do, it is very important to realize that it's not about you. It's about the people that you serve. So it's always important to understand where the needs are and try to address those needs rather than doing something that you feel comfortable with because that's what you like, but it doesn't serve any service any purpose. So please make careful review when looking at community service, that it is the community and it is something that is of need to the community.
I'm sorry, my presentation keeps sticking. Okay, um, the four steps for creating a successful service project. First, to a needs assessment. I believe that PAG Caring would have indicated in regard to the budget is identifying where you want to be, where, why you're doing this, and what are you hoping to accomplish at the end of this. So for us in a need assessment, first you wanna start off exactly what project you're doing and why are you doing it? What are you hoping to accomplish? What should it look like at the end? I know that when I prepare a project, I always try to envision in my mind, what will this look like? What would it feel like? Who the people will come to it? What would be involved to make it happen? So all of those things are in regard to how do you determine which of these projects you wanna go with? So in the needs assessment, it's looking in your community, finding where, are there projects or where are there problems? Where are there needs that you as an Interact Club can actually do? And I think it is very important to realize that you have limitation. You can't do everything, but to identify projects that are doable, that can have some meaningful impact to the people that you will be serving in the community. So the planning part of that is once you have identified what it is you're going to do, what the need is, it's then that aspect of managing your time, which Jury spoke about, the financial aspect of it, which um, PDG, PAG Karen spoke about. And then how do you um, go for the support from your Rotary family, which AG Carla spoke about, where Rotary, in our case, the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise as a sponsor would assist. And you would have to determine how would you want them to assist. You have within your club also an advisor. The advisor role would be to assist you through the planning process. So while the community service community would be responsible, this is one of the areas that this committee would be focusing on, is the planning aspect of that. What the resources you would need? Uh, where would you host the event? Would there be any costs associated with it? How many people are you hoping to come and who you're planning as your audience? All of that's in the planning. The implementation, it's now you're about to have the event, the day of the event, it happens. What should that look like? Is there a checklist in place to determine who's responsible for what? What timeline are you working with? And then also too, as um, was stated earlier in having a backup plan with community service events, while you may plan as much as you wish, sometimes things don't always work the way you expect. I know I didn't expect for my uh, presentation this morning to have a glitch where a few words were off or the stick pin was not moving. These things happen, they happen and you can't always plan for them. And I think it was said earlier um, by Cephia, Rotarian Cephia, you just go with the flow because you can't correct it then, you just go with the flow. Once the event is completed, the evaluation. In the evaluation, it is there that you would indicate, well, we had this that may have happened, we had a glitch, or not as many people turn up to the event as we intended, or the goal that we had set, hoping that we'd be able to give 50 bikes, or healthcare bikes to uh, a children's center. We didn't get that many, why didn't you? Maybe we didn't have enough funding. Um, maybe we didn't identify the right place uh, that would have needed that. So all of those things, the evaluation of the event was successful. It happens at that particular place. So normally at this particular point, we would actually break out into groups so that we can have an opportunity to feel out how would it be if we were to do a project. But when we think of a project, these are some of the things that you would wanna think about. Is the project feasible? Is the project advisable? Is it achievable? So we have SMART goals that help us to determine, should we go forward with a particular project? And usually you'll have your advisor assist you through this process into determining, is this the right project to do? Is the necessary funding within the club, what's in the club's reach? I think PAG Karen spoke about how it's so important to know where you're getting the funding from. So while the club 
On the other side, under the fundraiser committee may organize to raise funds. It's always important to know how much that is and is that enough for you to carry out whatever projects you may organize. Remembering that you only have two projects that you need to do annually. How will you gain club support? And this is very important. Everyone is a volunteer. Everyone has something to do. You have to find out how do you make your event seem exciting enough that you'd have your members come out and support. Having their input, having them be a part of it, they may have buy-in and may more than likely attend the event because they feel that the outcome of it is very important to them as well. Who could you partner with to get other resources? These are the things that you'd want to think about a part of the planning. How would you recommend executing the project? Again, all of this is a part of the planning aspect of it. So just to share with you some of the popular projects that we have seen, you know, fundraisers that were spoke about earlier, someone indicated a cake sale, uh, blood drives, benefit concerts, cleanup campaigns. I think uh, quite a number of you interactors have participated in the cleanup campaigns. Pen pile exchange, this has become very popular recently due to the COVID environment that we're now in. Uh, visit a nursing home, an orphanage, a homeless shelter. I know every year we try to do something uh, with one of the elderly home during Thanksgiving. And I believe one of the clubs, one of the interact clubs would have organized um, food donation to an elderly home uh, last year. So when we would have completed this project, um, now completed the project, here would have been the next area that we would have had as a discussion. Did the project meet the needs of the community as envisioned? Did all club members have an opportunity to participate? Was there a balance between financial assistance and hands-on assistance? Was there adequate media coverage of the project? So not all projects will require media coverage, but this is simply added as a part of one of the things you wanna think about that if you are going to promote event, um, that you wanna make sure that you have visibility. One of the things for us this year is to ensure that we are being visible about the projects we do and the good that we do in our communities. Was the club able to meet the financial demands of the project? What would you do differently next time? So all of this is a part of the evaluation. It happens after the project. And it should be a collective action by the committee and then those who would have attended the committee, um, attended the event, so that you can get a feel of what are the items that you may need to improve on. And I just wanna share with you um, some areas that you can go and to get resources in regard to organizing your events or planning activities. There's one particular area that I really like. It's the Global Youth Service Day. Um, this site, um, I hope that each of you would get an opportunity to go on to it. Uh, you'd see that it has a number of activities that clubs are doing internationally, which your club could get involved in. It is one of the recognized organization that Rotary has partnered with and it is available to you. And this is on Club Central. So lastly, I wanna share with you um, a project that was done by one of the Interact Club winners so that you can get a feel of what should a service project look like from start to finish. Okay, there's no sound. Can you hear it now? Yes. No, you, it started and then it stopped. So maybe you need to click the, the video again.
This is our hop garden. You all must be wondering what's so special about it. This is a part of our music under which we are providing hygiene and gifts to the underprivileged students from primary section of our school. But you must be thinking, hop garden and hygiene? When we first thought of the hygiene kit distribution project, we faced difficulty in arranging the funds. So we came up with an idea, why not establish an hop garden and generate funds on our own? There was an empty space within our school premises that was fit for gardening. So we collected few bucks from our lunch money and with it, we bought seed for perennial hops. Utilizing the seeds and that space, we have created an organic hop garden. Here, we grow coriander and mustard green. Every day after school, we walk in garden and then live for home. After the hops are grown, we send it to our school teachers, seniors and parents. Welcome to orientation and the sixth step of hand washing by Kathma of Kathma Dumita. We utilize the collected funds for distribution of hygiene kits to less privileged school students and invest in buying more seeds. After completing the pilot phase with distribution of hygiene kits to 50 students, we are already on our way to complete the second phase of this project. And we intend to do more. With this project, we have become more self-sufficient. We now create funds on our own. Not only we are bringing the change in the lives of all children, but we are bringing in ours too. So that's it. Um, I just wanted to be very quick about it. I know we have another speaker and I know we're at the end of the day. Some of you haven't had lunch as yet. So um, I want to entertain any questions you may have regarding community service. Awesome. Thank you, PP Tanya. Are there any questions for PP Tanya? That was awesome. We got all the ingredients for this wonderful leadership experience. Um, if we were to akin it to or um, compare it with making a cake and you need all those ingredients, you got all the tools that you need to lead your clubs as we move forward for this year. And so after you've made your cake, now for the icing. And I'm going to invite a membership chair, Sharon, to, I hope that's how your name is pronounced, to introduce our keynote speaker. Yes, uh, it is. You have it correct. <laughs> okay, Sharon. Okay, take it over and all introduce. Right, good afternoon to all. Since joining the Rotaract Club of Nassau Sunset in 2017, District Rotaract Representative elect Robin Curtis has thoroughly enjoyed fellowshipping through service. She has served on every committee of her club and has served at the board level for three years. DRRE Robin has had the honor to serve as president of Rotaract Club of Nassau Sunset. And during her tenure, the club had an exceptionally impactful year. Robin is a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and a volunteer facilitator with Friends of the Blood Bank Bahamas. DRRE Robin was privileged to serve on the Rotaract District 7020 team for two years and is both humbled and excited to serve as District Rotaract Representative of Rotaract District 7020 for the 2022-2023 Rotary year. Please welcome Ms. Robin Curtis. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Rotaract Sharon, for your kind words. I'd like to thank Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise, the sponsor club of these amazing Interact Clubs for the invitation. It is a pleasure for me to be here. 
I will quickly share my screen just so that you are as engaged as possible. I know you may be hungry right now, but I just ask you to bear with me as I share with you. So youth leadership in action. This topic um, that Rotary and Angelica asked me to speak on is a very interesting one and it could have been taken a number of ways, but I ask you to stay with me um, as I share with you this afternoon. So let's share, feel free to utilize the chat to ask questions and share comments. And I'll be more than happy to add, answer any questions that you may have at the end of the conversation. You are a leader. I know sometimes you always ask, what is a leader? Who is a leader? What is leadership? As Interact board members, let's first start with the fact that you are a leader. Okay, what does that mean? How do I lead? What do I do to lead? You are the person who leads or commands a group, organization, or country. You are the person who influences others towards the achievement of a goal and you are someone who people follow. Now, if you look at the screen, you will see there are some words in black. So you have commands, influences, follow. Those words can carry a negative connotation, especially if you are the wrong type of leader. So for me, as Rodorak um, Tisharan would have mentioned, I'm a past president. And so I was always cognizant of the fact that I did not want to be seen, especially as a female, it is easy to be seen as bossy, rowdy. And so when I saw the word commands, I was like, hmm, not so sure how I feel about that. Follow, do I want followers? Hmm, not so sure how I feel about that. Even influences is a little tricky like I said, depending on the type of leader you are. And so it's like, you have to be very, very mindful of the perception of those that you are char charged to lead. So are the, person, are the members of your club thinking, oh, she wants to command me, um, excuse me? She wants me to follow her? Um, no, and she wants to influence me. I am independent. I do my own thing on my own time. These are some of the, the responses and what's even worse, some of your members may never say this to you, but what you will see is that they stop coming out or they're not as interested as they once were. So as leaders, you have to be always mindful of the perception of your actions, your words, and the way you do things. But let's change the, kind of the, the negative connotation that surrounds those words sometimes. Let's think about how we can command get people to follow and influence by the way we do things, not just by what we say or what we may quote unquote demand, because there's nothing wrong with you walking into the room and commanding the attention of the room with your charisma. There's nothing wrong with you doing or uh, executing community service so well that you influence another student on your campus to want to become a part of whatever it is you're, you're, you're a part of. So they may not even know, well, oh, she's an interactor, but they see you moving about the campus with such vigor and serving with such vigor that they have no choice but to ask you, what are you a part of? I want to be a part of that. So command, the command may be, or the desire may be for your members to be on time. Instead of saying, you need to be on time, as a leader, take the we approach. Change exactly what you say. We must be on time. And also in your actions, remember, leaders do not show up late with a large uh, frap with extra whip double caramel from Starbucks, unless you brought a personalized order for everyone. When you show up late and you show up late lackadaisically, you show people that you do not respect them. You want your members to always feel that they're respected and valued and that their time is valuable. When life happens, communicate. If you have to be there as a leader, because life does happen, you have these wonderful devices. We're always on TikTok and Instagram. Do the responsible thing. Send a WhatsApp message if, if you do not get a response, because sometimes persons are so busy that they're not checking their phones. You want to send a call, make a call, sorry, and to ensure that your message as a leader is received and received in a timely manner. And if you are there on time, start on 
time. You want to command respect with charisma and, and by example, start your programs on time. Members will then know, hey, I have to be on time if I wanna catch this good stuff. And when you start on time, end on time. Another thing that you may want persons to follow is your dress code. I am wearing my Interact shirt with pink leggings. So you shouldn't be wearing anything else. Now that's a little weird, isn't it? Be careful of your messaging and be careful of the messages that you, sorry, the decisions that you make because you want to ensure that your decisions are as neutral and can empower all members and prospective members of your club. So you want to say, we want to ensure that we promote and represent the Interact brand so that can we be in our Interact shirts on Tuesday? If not, team, let's chat after. The reason this is important, let's look at this small decision or you may think it's small. Let's say there's a member who for whatever reason may not be able to afford our Interact shirt. But your statement was, I am wearing my Interact shirt so you shouldn't be wearing anything else. You want to cultivate an environment that is, it is community. You want your members to feel comfortable sharing with you that, hey, I may not be able to get the Interact shirt in time for Tuesday. Is it okay if I wear maybe a blue shirt? It's not my Interact shirt yet, but it's a blue shirt. You don't want a member to not show up because just because they did not have on the Interact shirt. And also ensure that your decisions are as neutral as possible. Maybe consider that the gentleman may, among you may not wish to wear pink leggings. So let's go back. Let's go back to the wait a minute portion. Commands, commands are not bad. You can command by demonstrating that it can be done. Be the example. For example, show up on time. Followers, don't let followers be your goal. Do not seek to create followers. Seek to inspire your peers and be genuine in every single thing that you do. Influence, just do your best. Remember that someone is always watching you. You may be influencing your peers, your teachers, and even your parents. So let's go a little deeper into youth leadership in action. And here we have some photos of interactors in action. And after a pandemic, it is such a joy to see interactors out and about once again, and I, as you can see, we're all safe. And I, I just love the action. This is pre-pandemic. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my journey and hopefully this helps you um, as leaders. Pre-pandemic life with the Rotary Club of NASA Sunset, the Rotarians of the Rotary Club of NASA Sunrise, and even some interactors. So we have KA, Kingsway Academy, GHS is featured as well. Life pre-pandemic as president, was great. We were outside, out and about. We traveled to render relief um, for, as a result of Hurricane Dorian. There were blood drives. We had fellowships in the homes of Rotarians without masks. Life was great. How to be a Rotaractor of the Rotaractor of NASA Sunrise. All along, you know, you plan, you plan, you plan. As a leader, you have a plan as to what you want to accomplish this year. You set your projects. What sometimes you do not plan for are the challenges that you may face. And listening to the training this morning, I heard more than once, it is important to have your backup plan. I cannot stress that enough, have a backup plan. Because aside from COVID-19, things happen. I was faced um, with a personal health pandemic during presidency. I was ordered to bed rest. And the first, well, the, one of the first things that came to my mind was what's going to happen to my club. I love Rotaract. I love my fellow Rotaractors. And I never really saw them, although president, as persons that I was in charge of. I always saw my, not only the board, but the club as a team. And when I was forced to be on bed rest, it was the most stressful time of my life because I am a hands-on person. I like to be present and I believe in leading from the back and the front. I don't expect, expect persons to show up and I'm not there or I'm strolling in late without a good reason. This period of my personal life proved to me how important it is to be a leader with heart and to lead genuinely. Because it was in this period of my life that Rotaractors of the Rotaract Club of NASA Sunrise proved to me that I was an inspiration to them. 
On the left, you will see me seated with some rotoraptors. This was at a joint blood drive. I could not drive myself there and I felt so, I, I don't wanna use the word depressed loosely, but I was very, very upset that I couldn't be present for a, a great project with my club, fellow Rotarians, our sponsor club, other partners were also involved and blood giving is a passion of mine. I didn't share it with my club. And the most touching thing was all I said to the board was I would not be able to make it. There were some board members that were aware that I could not, be there and they knew the reason why I could not be there. They were aware that I was on bed rest. I could not drive. I got two side messages and the messages said, you can't drive. So we're coming for you because we know you want to be there. That morning, we had to be there for 7.30. That morning, I was picked up by two of my fellow Rotoraptors without me asking for me to be able to just show my face and be present at the blood drive. That was one of the most heartwarming experiences. I have many other others, and one of the most heartwarming experiences of my presidency. These photos, you will see two photos. I'm not in those photos. These are photos of my team showing up in my absence, and the messages received were, we will continue without you. As a leader, it is exceptionally, it's exceptionally sorry, important to remember that service is always, not always convenient. You have to be genuine, know and adjust your why when necessary. Be flexible in your approach. Remember that you will not always be motivated and you will not always feel like leading. And last but certainly not least, do not be afraid to ask for help. Like I said, I mentioned briefly to some board members what I was dealing with at the time and that I would not be as president, present as president as I would have wanted to be and what, as I would have been in the past. And you will be surprised to know how much people will show up for you and for the community once they know that you have the community and their best interest at heart. So do not focus only outward, lead from within, and what spillovers will be great success because you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your membership, and these are the persons that you need, interactors are who you need to take care of the community. Interact clubs are only as strong as their weakest interactor. Leave no interactor behind. If you see an interactor that has been coming out and they have not, for whatever reason, not been showing up or not as active, not as loud in their communication, you know that they're a person that always has a comment and for whatever reason, they're not commenting, reach out. As leaders, be cognizant of the tone changes in your membership. They may be going through something that they just need to talk about or they may be going through something that you can assist with, or you know an adult that can help them. So leave no interactor behind as a leader and you will have strong, strong clubs. I challenge you interactors to show up for each other, the members and the community, as you would want others to show up for you. Number two is a point that's near and dear to me. Leave the y'all don't pay me attitude at the door. You didn't negotiate a salary when you joined. Most persons are very eager when they get a pin or right before they get a pin. I want to give back to my community until we realize how much it takes to actually give back to the community. Most times it's the time that is most grueling that it takes to plan exceptional service projects. You know, we will lose sleep as students Rotarian juries would have mentioned time management. You have to manage your time so that your schoolwork, because your students first, your schoolwork cannot suffer because of your love for community. You need your education to um, propel yourself forward to effectively serve and you can serve at your best the more you are equipped with education and resources. So no, Interact doesn't pay you. It won't pay you in money. It will pay you in experiences, but you are students first. So use your time wisely. And lastly, be a proud interactor. You are a part of something much, much bigger than just you. Your efforts are creating change and improving the lives of Bahamians and citizens of the world at large. You matter and your leadership matters. You are part of Interact, 
which is international action. You will not regret giving of your best effort to improve the lives of your fellow man. And as I'm sure some of you say, don't serve the community then, don't be an interactor then. And that's all I have to share with you. If you want to connect with me, I'm, I'm Rotarian Angelica has all my contacts. I am much better at responding to emails than I am at WhatsApp communications, but feel free to connect with me. And as all Rotarians present here, I am more than grateful to share with you and assist you in any way that I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, DRE. Robin. All right, let me see if there are any questions in the chat. Uh, I see a question from Jennifer. I would like to know what can be done. What can be one of the biggest mistakes a leader can make in your opinion? I would say the biggest mistake that you can make as a leader um, is to think that you do not need anyone on your team. You are, you can have a title, you can be, you can be the president of the club. If you want to, for example, have a bake sale, can you get all the supplies by yourself? Can you bake all the cakes? Can you get all the tables to set it up? Can you then buy the cakes to make the money for the club? So as a leader, it is exceptionally important to remember that you are, you need your team. There's a saying that there's no I in team. If you remember that and you treat, and that's not to say that you will not have to make hard decisions or have hard conversations with people, but try to always remember that you, you need these people. You're a person, first of all, you're all people. So treat people as you want to be um, treated. And then you need these people. So have respect and be mindful of that at all times. Awesome, awesome. All right, so I think that's it. I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. You did an amazing job, all our speakers, but I'm not the one to say thank you or I would be here all day. I want to invite our own director, Patrick, to just do a quick vote of thanks. And I thank you guys for staying on uh, 15, actually uh, half an hour after. Um, we started a bit late and I'm most grateful. So over to you, Director Patrick, to say thank you to our wonderful presenters. Good afternoon. I'd like to say thank you to all, all our participants, especially you, Donnett, for your moderation. You did an excellent job as a moderator. Director Angelica, Thank you to all our speakers, A.G. Carla, Director Jerice, PGA Karen, P.A.T. P.P. Tanya, D.D.R. Robbins. We thank you very much. Your words of encouragement was extremely, I know they were extremely because even I learned a lot from, from you. And we thank you very much for it. We'll also like to thank all the faculty advisors that came out. We thank you for coming and spending your time with us. We know you could have probably had something else to do with. We appreciate you coming. Also, last but not least, we'd like to thank our president, President Therese, for being here with us. And we thank you all for coming. Thank you all our Interact Board members. Congratulations, and we hope that this year be a very successful year for you all. Thank you very much. Back to you. Feed on it. Awesome. Thank you for that. And guys, uh, we had a great time. I want to especially welcome our youngest interactor to be on the planet. Um, I saw a little Moss on the line earlier with his mom, um, Decree Moss. I don't know if he's still on. Uh, let me see, is he still there on camera? That's him right there. That's my little godson. He's a young interactor to be. Great seeing all of you this morning. And so this afternoon, as it's a wrap, as we end and put the curtains down on today's training, 
that we invite Rotera and Tunisia to lead us in the four-way test as we go off this wonderful meeting. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you please unmute so we can say the four-way test? Of the things we think they are do, is it the truth? Is it, is it, is it the, the truth? truth? Is it fair to all concern? Is, is it, it fair, fair to all concern? concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it, will it, it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concern? Will it be beneficial to all concern? Thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you, uh, faculty advisor, uh, Ms. Lightborn from GHS. I'm not sure if there were any other faculty advisors here. Thank you so much that for your dedication, your service to the clubs, your service to um, your particular interact club and to Rotary. We appreciate you. And we hope that we'll be able to show that in a more tangible way at some point in the future. Um, so that's it guys, thank you. I know some of you have chores to do, you have things to do. Um, I think today curfew ends and a lockdown ends. So some of us have fun. Um, things planned for this evening. So have a wonderful rest of the day and be, continue to be people of action. Best wishes as you lead your clubs. Thank you. Bye-bye. And one final thing, we'll share the recording so that those who were not able to attend um, will get a chance to view this recording. So look out for that in your various group chats. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.